I'm Alicia Daniel Hall, Florida probate estate planning attorney and realtor. In this video, we will be going over the estate planning checklist to simplify your estate planning. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. Please remember to like and subscribe so that you will be notified as soon as I upload a new video. The process of estate planning can be a little overwhelming and frustrating, which is why I've created this checklist to kind of make it a little bit easier to get through the process. So the first thing you want to do when creating your estate plan is creating an inventory. It's an inventory of everything that you own, all of your assets, because this will help you go through the process of deciding who is going to receive which asset. Your inventory will also become very handy for your personal representative after you've passed away when they go through the process of administering your estate. Number two on the estate planning checklist is itemizing your debts. It is very important that you itemize your debts because believe it or not, your debts do not just disappear when you pass away. Here in Florida, we have a two-year statute of limitations after someone passes away. During that period, a creditor can actually open a probate on your behalf in order to recoup any funds that might be in the estate. In Florida, there are two ways that we cut off that two-year statute of limitations. The first is by providing notice to creditors directly to what is referred to as known creditors. These are creditors that are going to be identified on that itemized list. Or what normally happens is the family members are receiving or they're seeing that bills are coming from, for example, Chase Bank, so we know that's a creditor. Another way we can find creditors is by looking at bank statements. If we have access to a decedent's bank statements, we go through and we can see, okay, there's auto pay here, there's monthly payments to this company. Those are going to be known creditors. But if you leave an itemized list behind, it makes it much easier for your family members to know who those creditors are rather than digging around. But if we fail to send notice to a known creditor, they have two years. The second way that notice to creditors is cut off here in Florida is through publication. That notice to creditors that we are mailing to our known creditors will also be published in a local newspaper. And so what publication does is it reduces that in two years into 90 days for those creditors. But here's the thing. Again, even though we have the 90 day cutoff period, known creditors who do not receive any notice, they are still going to get two years. So you're not going to get the benefit of the 90 days, which is again why it's so important that you have an updated list of your debts. The third item on your estate planning checklist is naming and identifying your personal representative. The personal representative is the person who is going to be in charge of administering your estate in the probate case after you've passed away. Your personal representative is going to be providing the court with an inventory of your assets. They're going to be identifying and serving notice on all of your creditors. They are going to be responsible for making sure that any debts have been paid, if claims have been filed timely, and your personal representative will be responsible for distributing your assets to your beneficiaries in accordance with the terms of your will. I always recommend that you speak with your personal representatives before just naming them because you want to make sure that one, they know that they are your personal representative of choice, and two, make sure that they're willing to serve in that capacity. Another thing that I always recommend when you're naming individuals to serve as your personal representative is to name at least two people. You want to have an alternate, and this is because life happens to all of us. And in the event that your primary personal representative is unable or unwilling to serve in that role when the time comes, you will have already had a second person lined up and ready to go. Item number five on your estate planning checklist is create a will. Every adult should have a will. A will provides for asset distribution, naming of a personal representative. Remember, that's the person who is going to administer your estate when you pass away. You can also name guardians of your minor children or incapacitated children in your will. And if you want to, you can even leave assets to charity in your will. Make sure that your will is compliant with your state law as far as how many witnesses are required and whether the will needs to be notarized. Item number six on the estate planning checklist is create a living will. In your living will, you will clarify how you feel about having your life prolonged by artificial means. The seventh item on the estate planning checklist is to create a durable power of attorney. A durable power of attorney is a document where you are naming an individual known as your attorney in fact, who will be able to handle your financial matters if you are unable to do so. 
it's very important to note that your attorney in fact named under your durable power of attorney will not have the ability to control your assets once you have passed away. The eighth item on your estate planning checklist is to review your estate plan documents regularly. I recommend an annual review, pretty much around tax time because we have to file our taxes every year. It's around the same time each year. And so if you just add, review my estate planning documents to your to-do list, then you should be able to remember to get it done. In addition to reviewing your estate planning documents during tax season, you should also review those documents after any important life event, the birth of a child, divorce, or passing of a loved one. The next item on your estate planning checklist is to update your beneficiary designations. So your life insurance policies, your 401ks, your IRAs, these all have a beneficiary that is named to the account. You want to make sure that your beneficiaries are kept updated. First of all, you want to make sure these are the people that you still want to have named as your beneficiaries. And you also want to make sure that you replace any beneficiaries who may have passed away. And the final item on your estate planning checklist is to consult with an estate planning attorney who is licensed in the state that you live in. Estate planning involves state and federal law and can have serious implications if not handled properly. Despite what you may have heard, estate planning is not a do-it-yourself activity. Here at Genesis Law PA, we are determined to make your estate planning in 2022 as comfortable as possible. If you're ready to get started with your Florida estate planning, click on the link below to schedule your free estate planning consultation. I'm also including a link below where you can download your free estate planning checklist to help you get started.